Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now look at the classification of the Animalia Kingdom based upon whatever we have discussed so far. So this is my Animalia Kingdom. Now the first thing or the first parameter that we discussed was the level of organization. Right? What were the various levels that we discussed? Cellular level, tissue level, organ level, organ system level. Right? So now, if you consider the cellular level, the cellular level. So what comes under cellular level? We will see that. Now, if you talk about the next parameter that we discussed, what was the next parameter that we discussed? It was symmetry. Now the organisms which come under cellular level, they were the porifera. Now these cellular level organisms were asymmetric. Right? Okay. Now these, the third thing that we talked about was coelom. That is the presence or absence of a true coelom. Now these asymmetric animals were also acelomate. Now what were these animals? These animals were porifera. Right? Now here let us see the rest of the animals. If you talk about the level of organization, the rest of the animals were either tissue level or organ level or organ system level of organization. Right? If you talk about symmetry, so symmetry when you talk about there were three types of symmetry that we spoke about asymmetry, radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. Now, if you talk about the tissue level of organization with a radial symmetry and talking about the coelom, a coelomate. So, tissue level with radial symmetry, a coelomate, what were they? They were cylindrates. So this was the next phylum. So if you compare the first phylum porifera with the next phylum cylindrata, what do you see? It has cellular level, it has tissue level. It is asymmetric, it has radial symmetry. This is acelomate, this is also acelomate. So there were some improvements in cylindrata. Okay, okay. Then let's go to the next one. Now if we talk about the remaining types of um level of organization that is the organ level and the organ system level so now these organ these other organisms with organ or organ system level of uh, organization and with bilateral symmetry so let us see what all do we have there with bilateral symmetry now with bilateral symmetry again here we have three types depending upon the type of coelom that is they can be acelomate, they can be pseudocelomate or they can be coelomates. So what were they? These were platyhelminths. So this was the third phylum. When you talk about the pseudocelomates, what were these? These were the nematodes. The fourth phylum. If you talk about the coelomates, now these coelomates, if you see they are all coelomates, they all have organ system level of organization. They all have bilateral symmetry. So now you need more parameters 
to classify them. See, how were you able to classify them? Because they differed in some of these, some of these three parameters. But now you have reached a point where they are not differing in any of these parameters. So how are you going to define, I mean, characterize them? Okay, so now we will talk about the fourth factor which we discussed that is segmentation right now based on the type of segmentation which is present we can again we again divided them into different class so segmentation present so they were known as annelids Again, segmentation present, but the segmentation, the way, type of segmentation was different. They were known as arthropods. And for the rest of them, the segmentation was not present. So that is segmentation absent. So what were the rest of them which was left out? So we will take them here. So segmentation was absent. So what were the left out ones? The left out ones were the mollusks. So now we took into consideration the fifth parameter that is notochord, the presence or absence of notochord. So now notochord, if you consider this notochord absent in mollusks, Notochord is absent in echinoderms. And notochord is present in chordates. So this chart roughly tells you that how these different parameters which we have discussed so far, they were utilized to subclassify or to classify the Animalia kingdom. So where we ended up, we ended up in these 10 phyla, Porifera, Cylentreta, Platyhelminths, Nematoda, Annelids, Arthropoda, Echi Mollusks, Echinoderms, Chordata. So these were some of the kingdoms or some of the phyla, some of the important phyla under the Animalia kingdom. I mean, I just tried to give you an idea that why we discussed about so many parameters. Why was not one parameter sufficient to classify this kingdom? Now you understood why we needed so many factors to classify it because there are so many organisms. So if you just consider one factor, you will see that only a bunch of them will fall in one category and the rest all of them will fall on the other category. But when you have so many different parameters to classify them, you can actually classify them in a relatively better way. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about these different phyla under the Animalia kingdom. That is Porifera, Cylentrata, Platyhelminths, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Hemichordata and Chordata. So here by mistake it is Protochordata. It should have been Hemichordata. So these are the 10 phyla which we will discuss in detail in this lesson. So we will start our discussion with Porifera. So for, we will go one by one. We'll talk about each phyla. We will talk about all the characteristics, features, examples of each phyla. So that is how we are going to proceed with this lesson. So that is the agenda of our lesson hereafter. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.